I'm Diana Sanchez and I'm an assistant professor at Rutgers University in the psychology department. I am a social psychologist by training. I got my PhD actually in social psychology and women's studies from the University of Michigan in 2005, so not that long ago. I'm currently in my third year at Rutgers on the tenure track. What I'm looking forward to in the future um, would be uh, a great a group of graduate students to work in my lab. <laughs> this is an advertisement. Um, and I guess what you want to know is what kind of research I do. And as I've mentioned, I study multiracial identity. Um, and I talked about the work that I do from the perspective of a multiracial person. So how do you cope with being multiracial? But I'm also interested in how people perceive those who are multiracial. Today we have Barack Obama, who is a, a presidential candidate, and um, this is an exciting time for us to understand what it means to know that he is of black, white, biracial descent. Um, Tiger Woods was also another person in which there was quite a bit of media attention directed at his racial identity. So how do we perceive people who are both black and white? Um, that's an important question and we don't really know the answer to that. Do we see them as primarily black? Do we see them as primarily white? Um, under which conditions do we see them as black? Um, so in particular I'm interested in the idea that someone who is black-white biracial, because they are, they have a part white identity, they're not seen as appropriate for affirmative action. So in some cases we see people as not quite being minority enough for certain um, uh, attention or certain policies directed towards racial minorities. Uh, so I think that's an interesting idea and something we're pursuing in the lab and something I think is very timely. And also my work on couples, so I'm interested in looking at how gender roles play out in relationships. And for the first time, we're bringing in both men and women, um, well, heterosexual couples, so both couples, both sides of it, to ask people whether they endorse traditional gender norms, whether they act in feminine ways, masculine ways, and we're also asking, having them fill out some interesting measures using implicit measures. So um, do they have sort of automatic associations of gender with certain specific uh, scripts. And we're going to see whether people who are in couples have similar gender norms, um, uh, endorsement of gender norms, whether they share implicit gender self-concepts and partner concepts. So we're really excited about exploring those issues and um, seeing which relationships fare better over the long term. Advice to students, undergraduates or graduate students, or high school students. Find a good mentor, okay? So find someone who, um, oftentimes for women it's other women, uh, someone who can support you in your research goals, someone who believes in you. Um, it's important to have someone in academics who believes in your um, abilities. Oftentimes we lose faith in ourselves and it's important to have other people remind us of, of how important our ideas are or that we can um, succeed in various fields. So finding a mentor is huge and along after high school that is when I had the most success in that area but um, high school is a really hard time for me. What I really want is for there to be more female you know, teachers teaching the sciences. Um, so become one of those teachers, women teachers in uh, the sciences and um, don't be afraid to ask for the guidance you need. A lot of people don't take advantage of their guidance counselors and you should, um, especially if you're having issues like you don't think you can, uh, you're worried about your performance in the sciences, you um, are um, experiencing sexual harassment by a professor or feeling uncomfortable around a professor, you should definitely talk to your guidance counselors about these things. You're not sure what kind of career path to take, you don't know what would be best um, suited to uh, career-wise or what you're, what you're most interested in, you're not good in, you can get a lot of help from um, people in, in this, if you take advantage of the resources at your schools. Also as a 
undergrad, I would recommend getting involved, especially if you're going into social psychology, getting involved into research laboratories to get a sense of what's really happening in the research labs and um, if you're really interested in it and trying to get published. This is particularly easier at smaller universities because you have a smaller ratio from uh, teacher to student. At larger universities it's a little harder to get published early or to work very closely with a professor. As women, we often are afraid to promote ourselves or be assertive and I would highly recommend throwing that out the window. <laughs> I'm not saying be aggressive, I'm saying be assertive and confident and don't be afraid to tell people or to, tell, uh, to promote your skills. Um, so this is particularly important if you're trying to identify a mentor. You need to seem like you have faith in yourself, especially at the undergraduate and graduate level, for them to then invest in you. Um, and I know this is hard for women especially, but it is um, vital that we learn how to be assertive.